Thank you. Um, so like I said, or like he said, uh, my name is Andrew Watterson, and I work at a company called Asana. Um, and today I'm going to be talking about sort of personality at Asana. Um, and that sort of means two different things. Um, so the first thing is that for any uh, sort of software project that's sufficiently complex, um, you know, you really do need to have multiple personalities, right? You're solving for multiple use cases. You know, you have a bunch of sort of like really conflicting arguments um, and, and sort of feedback that you, you sort of get. Um, and so that's, that's sort of a thing. Um, that's something I'm really excited about these days. And then the second is just sort of personality in general and, and brand personality at, at enterprise startups. Um, and so speaking of that, um, you know, we're, all, we're all here today because we're you know, part of business to business um, and you know, enterprise companies. And that sort of makes me really you know, die a little bit inside every time you know, sort of someone comes up and says, hey, you work for an enterprise company, right? That's great. Um, I almost didn't come and speak here because I was like, no, I'm, I'm so sexy, right? Like, that's not unsexy. Um, and I think, I think the reason that it sort of uh, turns me off is because there are so many negative connotations about uh, you know, being, being a business, uh, business to business type company. And you know, so oftentimes you're you know, having sales calls with executives or, you know, who are super out of touch, who are not at all the people who are gonna, really going to be using your products. Um, or in order to integrate their, your product to begin with, they have to you know, meet with these super uh, you know, expensive IT consultants who you know, are of unknown qu quality. Um, and so just all these different things that are, uh, you, know, you, you end up having like sort of stakeholders, right, in the most pejorative sense of the word. And you know, that's not why I got into design at all. I, didn't, I don't want to uh, design for stakeholders. I don't want to design for these uh, you know, sort of stock photo people. Um, I want to design for you know, real, real people, right? Um, and so just to give you sort of some background on, on what our product actually is, uh, you know, we want to be the team task list, uh, the shared task list for your team. And you know, so totally buzzword free. You know, we call ourselves a task list. We are, you look like a task list. Um, and basically, this sort of comprises two, you know, two different uh, sides. One is that we're a database for you to put sort of all of your, um, you know, sort of thoughts about your company, things that you're working on, projects, tasks, ideas you might have, bugs, all kinds of stuff in there. Um, and we really want it to be this, this sort of single source of truth for your team. So you know, you or anyone else on your team can log into this product and sort of see, like, oh yeah, that's that's exactly what's going on. Um, and we realize that in order to do that, uh, we also have to be, have the second piece, which is communication. Because um, I'm sure that you know, all you guys sort of know right now that uh, you know, the source of truth is very often handled in uh, like your email box, right? And so you'll have this like, you know, big 15-person email thread that's going back and forth. And then finally, someone will say, you know, oh, I'll have this done by Friday at 2. Um, and that's, that's now the source of truth, right? There's like one little email, you know, one sentence long at the end of this like, ridiculous email thread that has you know, people coming in and out and forwards and things like that. Like, you know, now that's it. And so in order to, you know, so, so the source of truth sort of happens where the communication is happening. And so in order to sort of make that, uh, you know, make that part of our product, we needed to be where the communication uh, was. So um, you can sort of see, you know, this is just a really quick example about the way that Asana works. So you know, a customer support guy named Graham um, is going to put in a task about you know, all the user pictures in our product have been replaced with lolcats. And you know, there's a big customer who's really up upset about this. Um, you know, the product manager will come in and ask a question, and Graham will get back to her. Um, then she'll sort of engage the engineering team. You know, and the, the engineering lead will sort of talk to you know, the intern. Oh, I know you touched this code the other day. You know, what's up with this? And, and you know, hopefully, the, and the intern will be like, oh, yeah, you know, I can fix that in, in an hour. Um, you know, I've got a meeting right now, but, but after lunch, this will be done. Um, and then you sort of have people sort of jumping in here, right? So you've got the sales director who's like, oh my god, my biggest customer just called me up um, and, and is having this problem. Like, where, you know, where are we, you guys? And he can actually, you know, using our product, can sort of see all the, you know, all the context that's gone by so far. Um, you know, he can see that, that it was reported. He can see that you know, Marilise is on top of it. And then Nancy and, and Wilhelm are sort of taking care of it. Um, and you know, so that's really valuable. So you can see, you know, in addition to you know, a bunch of different roles um, sort of engaging with the product. We also have people from every level of the hierarchy, right? We have customer support, which may or may not be on site. We've got, you know, sales director level. We've got intern. You know, we've got sort of everyone is, um, is sort of contributing to this, to this conversation. Um, and that ends up being really important to us. We actually think that, uh, you know, one of our biggest differentiators is that we really do engage the whole team. Um, and we really do sort of strive to make sure that every single one of these people, right, the person who you know, is most invested in the product and the person who you know, sort of has gotten uh, pushed by you know, the most levels of management to use this product, um, that they both sort of see this product as a place that they can actually get things done and they understand the value, value prop of that. Um, and so we, want, you know, we certainly weren't the first to market. You know, we're not the first project management system out there. We don't have the most features. We certainly don't have the biggest sales team. Um, but we really do try to, try to go for true engagement. Um, and uh, and that's, that's pretty important to us. Um, so you know, just to sort of bring it, bring it back to the theme of this, of this conference, um, another company, you know, another sort of class of companies that is not actually going for 
um, you know, IT people and not selling to you know, out-of-touch executives are sexy companies, right? The consumer companies are sort of out there being like, hey, you, you guys, like you, you and you and you want to use our product? Um, you know, please, please come and do that, right? So they're catering to a ton of use cases, right? Facebook has like 15,000 use cases. You can be like managing events, you can be sharing photos, you can be, you know, my mom who logs in like, you know, that's like 17 friends and logs in, you know, one, twice a week or twice a, some, some, uh, not very often. Uh, you know, you can be doing all kinds of, you know, give you a, be a, be a uh, business promoting yourself. Like, you can be doing all different types of things, right? They're not just sort of going to their sales team and being like, hey, what are customers asking for, right? They actually have to, like, keep in their head um, a whole bunch of different, you know, sort of customer use cases at the same time. Um, and you, I'm, I'm sure you guys sort of saw this in a bunch of the other uh, people we've heard speak today. Um, and I think that one of the interesting things that, that sort of differentiates us from, from them even is that the less customization that your, uh, you know, your product requires or, or sort of can, can bear, um, the easier this is. Um, the easier it is to sort of understand all the different types of people who are using your product when there's not like this whole layer of abstraction that can completely change you know, the UI and the experience these people are having um, in between you and the people actually using it. So um, you know, Asana is sort of uh, sometimes using the same sentences like SharePoint or Jira or you know, these are sort of some of the um, types of products that we try to replace. And those are all super customizable solutions. And you know, just at least anecdotally, the people I've talked to are, are much, much less happy with those solutions. And I think that's probably because they're much harder to design you know, really great experiences when you've got that level of customization. Um, so you know, like I sort of said before, um, make it your job to convince your least invested user that you have value, right? So um, we'll talk about it in a little bit that all the different, uh, you know, every, every single person in your company sort of has a different level of investment in, in using whatever product it is you're selling. Um, and, you know, some are the people who actually pay for the product, some are the people who actually, you know, got sold to or introduced to the product. Um, but some are, you know, just like the intern or the people who, you know, some, you know like twice a week get emails from your product or something like that. People who are really just not engaged at all. And if you can convince them that you actually have value, um, that's really great. So um, this is just sort of the intermission slide. We're midway through part one, um, as it was like the opening credits. Um, so we're talking about multiple personalities. And it turns out that this is actually really hard, um, really, really hard to design for. So we actually get um, a ton of different feedback. One, one piece is that we're really complicated, right? So people come into the product, and they'll say, hey, I actually have no idea what's going on here. I can't, I can't figure it out. It's, there's so much stuff going on, um, so many advanced features. I really just, you know, what, what do I do? Um, and then we get other people who come in and say, hey, you guys don't have any features. Like, where's the, you know, where's, you know, such and such an advanced feature? Like, SharePoint has that. Where are you guys? Um, and so we also get the, the sort of feedback that we're too simple. And, you know, this is really hard, hard feedback to parse, right? And so a while ago, I sort of did this exercise that I would actually totally uh, recommend that, that anyone does, um, which is that I took sort of our current, this is a wireframe of our, of our current product, um, sort of took this and tried to boil it down to its essence and said, like, okay, let's, let's throw away all the features and sort of start from this blank slate. So take stuff away, take more stuff away, take more stuff away. And then, you know, what is really the essence of our product? And the essence of our product is we've got a task list and then we've got people. Um, and so that's, you know, that's all this is. And I said, okay, what if our product looked like this? And that's not really plausible, right? Like, there are a bunch of features that we actually, you know, know we need in the product that are not, are not reflected here. Um, but I can tell you that if we sort of launch this tomorrow, I bet you no one would email in and say, hey, it's too complicated, right? Like, this is just a very concise, um, you know, sort of representation of what it is that we're trying to do. And so we sort of ran with this for a while, and we said, okay, well, let's, let's come up with all the reasons, you know, let's try to sort of mold this into a real product. Why can't this be our real product? Um, and so, you know, like I said before, on any team, you've got, you know, a whole bunch of team people. And, uh, you know, one thing we found out about our business is that, you know, there's one person who's really the champion um, for you know, introducing our product into, onto that team, right? And the teams who are successful have this person. And usually it's someone in the leadership position, um, you know, the product manager or something like that, who really is an organized person who wants to, you know, their goal is to help the team get organized. Um, so we've got this leader, and what we would love is if they came in um, you know, for the first time, they're sort of setting up their team on Asana, and they you know, sort of put in a few tasks, and then they sort of discover that, like, oh, I'll put in a few more tasks, and I'll, I'll assign one, right? So we've got tasks, which are sort of the base level of our, of our you know, feature set. And then we've got you know, people, right, which is sort of on the second level. And then they, you know, after they put in, like, 20 or so tasks, um, you know, they sort of start naturally grouping them. And now we've got projects, right? And so it would be great if the feature set could sort of become more complex as people's usage got more complex. And that we could sort of, you know, you'd never be looking at a view that was more complex than what you actually needed, and that we would sort of naturally introduce you know, different features and filters and you know, all the way up to our most advanced features as you sort of went. Um, but sad trombone, that absolutely never happens. That is not the way that, that people use the, uh, use the product at all. 
What happens instead is that they'll get, uh, that's not the flow that I want, they'll get to sort of this point, and then everyone will ask the same question, or a lot of people will ask the same question. And they'll sort of, they'll sort of put in four tasks, and they'll be like, hey, how do I make a Gantt chart? And we'll be like, what? That's, well, so first of all, this is a really hard question for us to answer, because we don't uh, let you make Gantt charts right now. Because um, we actually think that you know, very few teams actually need that for their you know, project management needs. Um, and so we've asked people, we've said, OK, well, you know, tell, me, tell me a little bit more about what you're going for here. Why, why do you want a Gantt chart? Um, and it turns out that you know, this leader person here um, you know, is usually the most organized person on the team. And they have this vision of like, what would my, my organized team look like? And in the sense that they're sort of trying our product, one of the things in that vision is that they're using Asana, which is great. We like that. Um, another thing in their vision is that there are Gantt charts all over the wall. Um, and that's, that's really bad, right? But apparently in like some business 101 textbook somewhere, um, people sort of started equating like getting organized and having Gantt charts. And so they come in and they're like, OK, well, I'm looking for features. Can my team use this? Um, where are the Gantt charts? And so that's, you know, that's actually really difficult. Um, because people are sort of coming in and expecting all the complexity in the world to be sort of exposed to them at the same time. Um, and that's, that's incredibly difficult, because that sort of you know, conflicts with, our, um, you know, with, the, with the other use case that we know we need to support. Um, so how are we going to solve this? And I'll admit that we're actually in the middle of this project right now. I'm going to, you know, spoiler, I have no answer. Um, but you know, one of the ways we could think about solving this is to actually solve simplicity plus power. Right? This is sort of the, the really annoying response, like, oh, I have this problem. Well, go solve it. Um, we could actually say, like, OK, well, how can we make a, a UI that is both simple and powerful at the same time? Um, and this is not you know, just full disclosure. This is not the future of Asana. This is just a sketch I made. Um, but one thing you could do is you could actually sort of figure out what, what power means and what simplicity means. And so in this sort of mock-up, you've got um, a whole bunch of different task lists. So it's very simple in that there's no navigation. You can actually see everything, you know, all the data in your workspace you know, up there all at once. Um, so there's no navigation. There's no sort of understanding how different parts move you know, and work together. All the parts are just right there. Um, and you can sort of see how they're laid out um, you know, equal or unequal to each other. Um, and then you've got these very simple task rows. There's no filtering. There's no sorting. There's nothing like that. You've just got a task name, a person, and a checkbox for when it's done. Um, so it's very simple. But in that way, it's also very powerful. right? Like you, can, you, know, you can sort of drag tasks around. You can sort of you know, understand, like, oh, here's all the things that my team is working on at once. Um, so, you know, like I said, one way to do this is to sort of solve you know, simplicity plus power in, in some way, right? How can you make a UI that actually um, you know, gets what both of those people are, working, are, are looking for in a product and, and makes that happen? Um, the second thing you could do is you could sort of change the question, right? So I mentioned before that we actually have a lot of parts to our product. Our product is actually a lot of things combined. Um, and so one of the things, you know, it's, it's sort of a database and a communication system combined. Um, and like I said before, when people sort of think about this database, when people think about getting organized using this type of product, they think about Gantt charts. And that's really bad. Um, but we could also sort of change the question. There, you know, there are a number of products that are sort of doing um, you know, enterprise collaboration that, that no one comes into looking for Gantt charts. Right? Like Yammer is a great, uh, great example of this. You know, no one comes into Yammer and says, OK, how do I get my team organized? How do I make a Gantt chart? Um, and that's because Yammer has sort of you know, flipped the, the equation and sort of constructed themselves around communication. Um, and you know, I don't think Yammer is the full answer either. Right? We, have, we think we have a very you know, strong position relative to Yammer, um, because no one's actually getting real work done in Yammer. But you know, we think that there is like, sort of this balance point where um, you know, if we sort of change a little bit what we're emphasizing, right? are we emphasizing tasks? Are we emphasizing projects? Are we emphasizing adding people? Are we emphasizing sending messages to them? We could actually sort of change the question and change people's expectations. And then um, you know, we have to be really careful when we do that, that people are still having the sort of level of productivity success that, that they expect from Asana and that has made us successful as a company. Um, but if we can do that, then you know, maybe we're on to something. So part two, um, personality. And I'm actually, this, this section is way too long, so I'm going to skip ahead. Um, I'm going to talk about, uh, that's adorable. Uh, talk about, oh, actually, that was, that was important. So we actually sort of have two, you know, when we're talking about our brand personality, right? Um, the slides before was this was the last company I worked at. Um, and you can see, you know, they were a consumer company, and that means that they get to be adorable, right? They get to have these two little characters who are like playing the, the concertina and like eating shakes and stuff like that. Um, it's super fun. Um, we can't actually do that because we need to convince people of two things. One is that they can uh, bring this to work with them, right? Like th this actually has to come and live with you in this professional environment, you know, which has such and such an office culture that may be more or less conservative. Um, you need to feel like you're in control of you know, all this stuff that you need to get done. And then you actually need to get things done. Um, and you know, fluffy characters sometimes you know, sort of support that, but not very often, which I think is why um, you, know, you don't often see this branding from, from enterprise type companies. Um, the second thing we need to be able to do is to, um, and this is a little bit nuanced, but we need people to be able to use this like email. 
Um, and so one of the, one of the slides um, that I skipped over is this was our mobile competitive landscape um, when we did our first, uh, our first mobile app. And uh, the problem here is that you know, sort of you come in here, and these apps have like a ton of visual personality. So you look at these in the App Store, and you think, oh my, yeah, I want to use that. Like I could, you know, that, that wood is great. And look at all those colors. Like I would love to, you know, sort of look at this all the time. Like it's beautiful. Um, and they really are. But the problem is they're, they're a little bit too distracting, right? Like you end up having sort of like this goofy wood frame around like all of your tasks, right? And so if we're, we're expecting you to sort of, you know, entrust Asana with your every, you know, your every thought about your work, right? Everywhere and, you know, every day and all day. Um, it actually becomes really distracting to have all that, all that fluff around it. Um, and so this was something that you know, we battled really hard against, and we had a really ugly mobile app. Um, and then we got to you know, sort of a, a mobile app that, like, frankly, looks a little bit the same, but had a vastly different star rating. So I guess uh, you know, we, our attempts to make it, make it prettier really did work. Um, but what I really wanted to talk about was this. Um, so you know, I'm sure you guys are all familiar with the, with the Like button on Facebook. Um, and it turns out that one of our co-founders actually PM'd that project. Um, when, when that was sort of started at Facebook. And so we had this idea you know, a really long time ago. We were like, OK, well, what if we, you know, what if we sort of introduce that into a, into a business setting? What if you could actually like things in Asana? Um, and we were sort of playing with that. We are like, oh, we don't really know how that would work. Um, but then one of, the, you know, one of the sort of more personality-full of our engineers, you know, one of the cultural cornerstones of our office, um, you know, prototyped this during a hack day. Um, and we turned it on for ourselves. And we realized immediately this was amazing, right? Like, this was like the best thing ever. Um, and you know, on, on sort of the subject of personality, uh, there are a lot of other products that have sort of included the like button, um, you know, and sort of use that as the way that you can sort of up, upvote things. Um, but we really wanted to have like something a little bit more. We were said like, no, this is big enough that it deserves its own thing. Like we're not just going to sort of be one of the you know hanger -ons, hangers on um, of the like button. We're going to have uh, you know we're going to have hearts. And this actually turns out to be an editorial nightmare because uh, you know you heart things and I hearted them and this has seven hearts. Um, but um, you know, it turned out to be really cool, and it was, it was amazing that once we turned this on internally, you know, if you want to give your coworkers praise right now, you want to say, hey, that was a great idea, or like, you know, that was a funny joke you just made, or something like that, um, you know, there's a really high bar to doing that, right? You have to care a lot about their idea in order to send them, you know, like sort of praise. You have to figure out what you, what you actually want to say. Whereas if you can just sort of heart something, right? It's just like this incredibly easy and powerful and, you know, sort of uh, close feedback mechanism that happens at work, you know, in a place that's not typically, you know, uh, you know, very intimate, um, but it actually works really well. And so, you know, we were just hearting things all over the place. You know, we heart tasks that people put in when they think they're great ideas. We heart it when you know people upload attachments of mockups. Yeah, I like that one and not this other one. You know, we heart it when someone you know makes a funny joke in a comment. Um, we heart it when someone completes something. Right? Like I completed this thing I've been working on for two weeks. Hey, that's fantastic. You get a heart. Um, and so, in sort of a PR stunty way, we launched this on Valentine's Day, and. Uh, and the, immediately, people were like, are you kidding me? Like, how could you possibly have been working on this? Like, we've wanted an Android app for six months, and you guys are you know, off screwing around with hearts, right? So people actually got really mad. And other people you know, were a little bit less um, you know, comparative with our Android app and said, um, you know, hearts have no place in my business, right? Like, this is not, I don't want to constantly be like, hearting things around you know, with my coworkers. That's really weird. Like, I'm going to get sued for sexual harassment or something. Um, and so people had a really hard time sort of understanding that you know, this could be a, a business thing. But we, you know, we sort of knew. We, we sort of had um, enough of a brand personality to know that we had sort of struck the right balance between being, you know, being productive and actually sort of encouraging people to do all the things that we wanted them to do um, while still sort of uh, getting people closer. Because that's actually another thing we really need to do. Because we're sort of trying to replace um, you know, something that's very personal like email or you know, like in-person meetings or sort of things like that, we actually have to be able to replace a lot of the personality that you get with um, you know, with face-to-face -face interaction. And that is incredibly hard for any technology to do, you know, including Facebook. Um, but we, we sort of have to at least take a swing at that bat. Um, and so that's sort of uh, one of the things we tried to do with Hearts. And so then around the same time, we actually made t-shirts um, for our office. And uh, it says Asana's for Harders. And uh, these, were, these were great. These were a huge hit. The day after we um, sort of gave these t-shirts out, uh, a full one third of the office wore these to work the very next day, like without any coordination. And so we like we have this big group photo of like 15 of our employees or something wearing wearing this shirt. Um, and so it became this sort of like you know external like brand piece of brand personality, and also this internal piece of brand personality that people were really you know both of our both our customers who ended up really liking this feature, and our internal people were really just excited that they sort of worked at the heart company now. Um, and so that was really exciting for us. And just as one one last thing, um, if you guys go to our website asana.com and you scroll all the way down to the bottom. Um, there's a little icon of a cat. 
uh, as a cat. And if you click on it, uh, you get our proposal for Office Kitten deployment. And this is a document written up by one of our engineers about all the you know, pros, cons, risks, you know, like rollout schedule, like all of these sort of things um, for having cats in our office, uh, complete with many pictures of lolcats, um, you know, competitive products we might use instead of cats, like llamas or robots. Um, and this is actually public on our website. And my favorite thing is that this is not actually part of our, of our branding, right? Like our branding, you know, all the way up this page, you know, all the way up this page, like this is much more sort of like corporate and like, hey, we're all in it together. We have the awesome, you know, stock photo of hands. Um, but, you know, so it takes a while for people to find this, typically after they've made like a big investment in our, you know, in our brand and in our website. Um, and it's really cool when people find this because they'll always tweet. They'll be like, oh my god, I found the kittens page, right? Like, this is fantastic. And it's, it's just like one of those things that like after you've sort of had, you know, you've taken the time to have a relationship with our brand for a while and sort of brought, bought into what, what it is we're trying to do, um, you know, we're going to sort of have some fun. And, uh, and people sort of always love it. Um, so I actually apparently have five minutes left. I, have, I either talk incredibly fast or um, I got a bonus. So just to sort of wrap up, um, one, of our, you know, one of our sort of core company values is, is you know, balance in all things, right? And so I think that you know, especially in the personality department, we've really you know, tried and will continue to try because we care about these things to balance sort of having a really strong brand personality and being able to you know, sort of have an emotional experience with our customers, whether it's part of our visual design, like I sort of showed you in the mobile app, um, or just part of our brand design, like I showed you, you know, with the hearts and the cats. Um, you know, while also sort of selling people on the idea that, like, no, we're a trustworthy product. Like, you can actually put all of your data in here, and it's safe, and you're going to have, you know, security and uptime and all those good things. Um, you're going to be able to sort of get your team on it and get things done and sort of, uh, you know, have this, have this solid experience. Um, so, you know, balance in all things, and we hope that that will help people, you know, do great things uh, with personality. So, yeah. Um, I'd love to take some questions if anyone has any. Anyone? No questions? Oh, okay. Um, so I don't actually uh, have specific statistics on this, but I think the response from our you know customer support team has actually been been uh, much more positive after that sort of initial backlash, that initial like you know what what is it that you guys are doing over there? I don't really take you seriously as a company. I think that people have have yeah sort of caught onto it and and really like it and and you know just anecdotally from talking to my friends that that use the product, they're like yeah this is actually one of the, one of my favorite features of Asana. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think that's a problem we have uh, with a lot of things, is, you know, because our, our product is so flexible and because there's sort of, you know, this infinity of ways of using Asana, um, it really does take a lot of, um, you know, sort of training and hand-holding for, you know, to get some of the best practices. And, like, you know, this thing, you know, a lot of, a lot of uh, products that are more domain-specific have this really nice thing they can do where they can go in and they can find out how people are talking about this very specific workflow. Um, you know, so Pivotal Tracker sort of uses all the, uh, you know, the, the voca vocabulary of Scrum and Agile and things like that. Um, and, you know, if you were making a, a system for hospitals, I'm sure you could use, you know, very hospital-specific language. Um, we can't do that. We have to sort of map uh, everyone's sort of specific workflows onto these core concepts that we've, uh, you know, sort of identified. And then, and then the question is, okay, how do you sort of uh, educate people on how to, like, roll them all together into something that works for their workflow? And then, and also let, make sure that, uh, you know, the department next door to them you know, in their same company can then use it for a totally different workflow. Um, and so that's sort of one of the harder things in our vision and also, you know, one of the more exciting problems to solve. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So this, I think this is similar to, um, you know, I was, I was worried that I wouldn't have enough time to talk about our business model and it turns out the, oh, sorry, the question was, um, just anecdotally, a lot of the people that uh, are using Asana are using it sort of for their personal, for their own personal use. And how do we plan to sort of take that into a much bigger, you know, into big companies and actually start start making money off these accounts? Um, and I think so. First of all, people using it for their personal use is great, right? Because that, that's exactly what I said before. We actually want people to be as invested in the product as possible. And if you just sort of have a bunch of, you know, if you have like the IT director who's like, yeah, this is great, but no one in the company sort of, you know, actually is using it effectively, then you know, then we're we're sort of nowhere. Um, and so I think, I think the goal is to get people not just using it for themselves, but using it within their small teams, right? So um, it would be great if those people who are currently using it for themselves actually, you know, ended up introducing it to their team. And then you sort of get this, like, okay, well, we're running this team on, on this, this uh, you know, product, and it's become sort of indispensable to our, um, you know, sort of our operation. 
And then you can sort of uh, imagine how we would grow to like other teams of that company, right? Like we can start, then we can sort of start having the, you know, once this has happened sort of organically a few places around the company, then we can sort of call up the IT department and be like, hey, these three teams are actually like using this incredibly well. You know, what would it take to, you know, how can we sort of start rolling this out to all your other teams? Um, yeah, so we actually just, uh, we released a feature called Organizations a few months ago that was really meant to start uh, pushing into much bigger companies and it did things like um, being able to sort of section off within one sort of big company, um, being able to section off things by team and they have you know, their own members and their own permissions and, and sort of their own list of projects and things like that so you're not coming into a company and just seeing like you know, one list of projects that has to be everything from um, you know, recruiting to sales to you know, development to everything. Um, so yeah, so that's something in our sales team, uh, you know, I have no details on that whatsoever, but our sales team has actually started to do that. Um, I'm getting the X, which means that maybe I can slip in one more question or I'm done. done. I am done. <laughs> All right, thanks guys so much.